Yo. What's up, Doc? <laughs> What's up? I'm fucking excited. Me too. This is gangsta. This album right here. I can't wait for the world to hear it, man. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Logic here with Hard Knock TV. I'm about to sit down with my boy Nick Huff to discuss my third studio album, Everybody. <laughs> Knocking door down, look at Jehovah Witness. God is my witness, I'm witness, but on the real, I think I need another witness. If it was 1717, black daddy, white mama wouldn't change a thing. Light skinned motherfucker certified as a house nigga. Well, I would goddamn go figure, and my blood is a slave and a master. It's like the devil playing spades with the pastor, but he was born with the white privilege. Oh, uh, man, what the fuck is that? White people told me as a child, as a little boy playing with his toys, I should be ashamed to be black. And some black people look ashamed when I rap, like my great granddaddy didn't take a whip to the back. Not accepted by the black or the white. I don't give a fuck, praise God, I can see the light. Everybody talking about race this, race that. I wish I could erase that, face facts. Everybody people, people, everybody bleed, everybody need something, everybody love, uh, everybody know how it go. You're black, you're white, but obviously listening to this album and having conversations with you, you didn't feel really accepted by either. Yeah. How does that play into to the psyche of... The amazing thing about feeling as though I wasn't accepted by either and then writing all this out, because once again, this has been a therapeutic thing for me as well, because I've never discussed it on a record. So I used to be like, oh yeah, black people won't accept me, white people won't accept me, but that's not true. Um, and especially in these mission statements that you get with the album, you see that I say like, I've come to the realization, of course black people accept me, of course white people accept me, of course people accept me. It, it is certain sections sects within that race with big voices and that are very powerful that have made me feel as though that entire race does not accept me but that's all just bullshit and it's manipulation and it's my mind and it's me so i think it's just one of those things where like i just i, I just it was a me thing everything is you you know like it's like have you ever seen the miracle worker with mm -hmm. uh, Helen Keller, yep. yeah, but the classic black and white. Mm -hmm. And so there's that moment when she, oh, we might have talked about this, I think. But there's that moment when like at the very end of the movie, spoiler, where she finally understands when she's trying to be taught because she's uh, blind, deaf, and mute. And she's trying to understand sign language and that, you know, you know, A, B, C is like spelling things and water was one of them. So she tries to spell water and uh, and she just doesn't get it. She doesn't get it. And then she puts her hands under the under the water at the end of the movie and does it. And then she gets it. And it's like so. It's such an emotional thing. It's really beautiful. And she gets that. And then she goes. It's like really awesome. It's great. It's, sorry. I'm. It's, it's just kind of <laughs> making me a little emotional just because like when you think about this little girl and like her teacher who spent months and months and months with her trying to get her to understand to be able to comprehend the world around her and then she gets the water oh my god and then she like runs and then knows that like oh this is grass and she's like doing all this and then like she just says like oh this is my teacher and it's like i don't know it's really beautiful yeah anyway she comes to an understanding if yeah but it's a, can teach exactly yeah sorry i just got so trapped in what i was just saying we understand it's us it's up to us it's great to have amazing teachers but is that thing inside of you where it clicks and you understand so for me i understood like i am beautiful black is beautiful i'm not ashamed to be white what the fuck does that have to do with anything you know what i mean but it's like the lineage the people who've come before me understanding that and that's why like in that second verse because i feel like you listen to that shit and you're like oh damn you listen to that first verse and you're like damn this is crazy and you listen to that second verse and you're like oh shit <laughs> like you know you really are like damn like what he's saying is like so real and that's one thing that we talked about and you really helped me here was no matter what this is a big point in this interview i think no matter what people think no matter their opinions, no matter what they say, and no matter how they feel about what I've written in this album, everything I've said is the truth. So you might not like the truth, you might not like that I said it, you might not like that I've used certain words to explain scenarios or situations in my life, but they all happen and they're all the truth. And I'm not trying to use them to catch a headline, to do that, like I'm just doing it from a pure place. So. That's why, you know, yeah, I mean, growing up, white people made me feel like I should be ashamed. My grandparents, you know, I'd be, I'd beg to sleep at their house and I'd be like, oh, can I stay in the guest room? And they're like, oh, it's being redone. And I'd be like, oh, can I sleep? I might've told you this, but like, oh, can I, can I sleep on your couch? Like, no, sorry. Like, oh, can I, I'll sleep on the floor because I didn't have family, you know? So like, I didn't really realize until later it was because I was black. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's, a, and that's like fucked up, you know? Um, and the great thing about my black side of my family though is they always treated me great. Like I didn't realize like I was white, like, you know, or like in black, like I didn't realize that. And, and then you, I went out into the world. 
So I'm accepted by this beautiful black, my black brothers and sisters and all that. And then I go out into the world and then they treat me an, another way. And I see these other black, beautiful brothers and sisters that are treating me as though I'm like adopted, which I talk about in the, on the album. So that is one thing that was hard. Also, real quick, just in that, like everybody, people, everybody, like I'm not, it's, this isn't like some fucking like all lives matter like this is no this is literally i'm just saying like everybody bleeds everybody's people everybody loves everybody needs something everybody goes through something and this is what i've gone through and that's all it's about and in the hopes that me saying this can help somebody else that's it and and for a therapeutic to finally stand strong with a firm grip on who, my identity mm -hmm. and to say you might not accept me but fuck fuck everybody like i am this me. is who i am and this is me you don't gotta like it that's cool but like this is me when I say, but he was born with a white privilege, and I go, hey, man, what the fuck is that? Like, I don't do it in a way where it's like, obviously, I've, I've experienced what could be considered white privilege as like, I might not get stopped at a, at a stoplight because I look white. But I'm also not saying that what I've gone through is any more, you know, more or less messed up than what this black man or asian woman or this or that has gone through i'm just simply saying like you could be like oh you've lived your whole life with white privilege based on how you see me but as a little boy playing with his toys white people told me i should be ashamed to be black so then i turned to the black community which seemed more loving and and to accept me but once i became famous black people would treat me like my great granddaddy didn't take a whip to the back so it's like it's simply saying like sure i mean we all get it you know what i mean like Black people are more accepted in hip hop. So if I looked black, I would definitely be accepted more for, without question, you know, regardless of like skill or this or that. I'm not as successful as I am because I'm white. I'm as successful as, or because I look white. I'm as successful as I am because I am very fucking talented and I rap good and I have a good message. And I do think that there are a lot of mixed people out there who can relate to me and have pushed me and I think there are some white people for sure that look at me and go man in the adversity of not only he's being black but people certain people in that community aren't fucking with him because he looks white but he's still continuing to persevere over what they say and saying fuck that you know needing their acceptance and he's still persevering maybe I can do it too you know, some white kid from the suburbs who like really loves and appreciates and respects rap, but has always felt because he was white that he was not allowed, which doesn't sound right to me because I'm pretty sure hip hop allows and loves everybody, but because he's white, he can't rap or he's not good or we have to compare him to other people. And then looking at me and also biracial people could look at me and go, wow, just like LeBron as a little boy looked at Michael Jordan and went, wow. So it's like, yeah, sure. I'm here because of how I look and because of how I don't look, and because of how I rap, and because of this and that. So there is a, there is a lot that go into it. But, the, but a big thing, and I don't know if you want to cut this into everybody, is when I say that line, especially, what the fuck is white privilege, or what the fuck is that? Like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, I mean that in, this, in the respect of, like, you can't put me in that box, because I'm not white. So shut the fuck up. It's not that you're not saying that white privilege doesn't exist. And I'm not even saying it doesn't exist for me. I'm just simply saying, like, you can't say that I'm successful or you can't say that I don't know what it's like to be discriminated against. Because that's what people do. They literally, I, I had some, I forget, this is another thing that I saw. I think it was DJ Booth. It was somebody, I really fuck with DJ Booth. Somebody who did like a really good write-up on something I said, oh, I just went on a tangent about equality and love of everyone and regardless of race and all this other shit and da-da-da and like to fight racism and all this shit. And somebody was like, you can't fight racism. You don't even know what racism is, motherfucker. You're just white. Wow. That's literally what I'm talking about right there. So for somebody to be like, you're race, you, know, you don't know what racism is. You're literally being racist to me because you, because of the color of my skin. And you're saying that because of the color of my skin, I don't know discrimination, you right. know, or I can't experience that, which is in itself is like a oxymoron, I guess. Like it doesn't make any sense. And the liner notes. You say, uh, I've been forced to believe that acceptance, acceptance from others will grant me acceptance within myself, which is a cold hearted lie that society has led me to believe. When did you come to, to realize that? With this album. This album is really like, man, I was born to make this album, man. And that's what's crazy because it's so scary because every time I do, every time I make a piece of art, I'm always like, damn, how can I outdo this? How can I outdo this? And I've never felt that more than I have with this. And I think just moving forward because I have all these ideas for, for you know, what I'm going to be doing, but 
it's like it's not about outdoing you know like when i listen to kanye who i love like every album is so different that they're not really in a space to be compared so you you might have your favorite or what you like because i know you love college dropout because you love the boom bap the raw the from the heart just no tune just the raps you know what i mean and then like i love graduation because it's so sonically grand and big and what he's saying so it's like everybody's got their favorite yep. but that doesn't mean that like as long as the music is good that's really all that matters right. so it's like just because i was born to make this album doesn't mean that i can't i can't make make other albums and you know or whatever just in, enjoy it but sorry i'm kind of going on off on a, on a tangent here but acceptance from others like oh that's what i was saying that it's on this album that i realized that um uh, but i mean i still struggle with it so it's like because we still want to be accepted it's a human thing it's a human thing mm -hmm.